Hi everybody, welcome to Friday in Australia. So this will probably be a one day delay. So you'll probably get it on Friday, your time in the rest of the world. Hi, Lena here, Tarot Down Under. Had to jump back with the Twittergate scandal. Don't you love it? I'm the president and I demand the right to lie to the American people on every platform. Okay, interesting argument, Mr. President. So will Twitter buckle under or will they stand up to him? What's going to happen? What I'd like to see is every newspaper and every radio station, every TV station, choose a day next week and call it fact check day. And just fact check him in real time for 24 hours on every medium. And then it'll be flat out trying to sue everybody. All at the same time. It'd be a great thing to do, a bit of a guerrilla campaign. Okay, so I've brought out the Toth deck. So this is Trump versus Twitter. What is going on here? Yet another attempt to dismantle the First Amendment. He's taking the Constitution apart in bite-sized pieces, isn't he, really? Clause by clause. So let's have a look at this. Trump and Twitter. Trump and Twitter. He wouldn't be president if it wasn't for Twitter almost, so he must be beside himself. Twitter and Trump. Let's have a look. I think sanity will prevail, let's hope. But in the middle, the seven of wands, which in the right of wage is warding off other enemies and so forth. I hope this is Twitter standing strong. Um, so it will take courage for them to actually stand up to him. Uh, I don't know who's left who actually has old fashioned sort of principles because that's not what social media platforms and the people who give birth to them are really known for. So it's the principle at stake, but it's sort of making us all look at what is that principle? What is free speech? Yeah. So who can say what? It's a very fundamental sort of look at this issue. Behind it, this was happy days. This is when Twitter loved Trump because he made them a fortune and Trump loved Twitter because it was his mouthpiece. So this was the relationship until a few days ago even. That's how recent that past is. But this card in the Toth deck, can you see, is called satiety. A weird word, we never say it, um, but meaning saturated. It's gone as far as it can go. It's a perfect card for their relationship. It's absolutely saturated is probably a better way of looking at it. What's under this is the Eight of Cups in this card, Indolence. So this is Indolence, laziness, who's lazy? Well, maybe these social media platforms have been lazy in not fact-checking things sooner. You could make that argument, but then you don't get all the rest of the free speech. It's very hard to know really the right way to navigate this, but um, it can certainly always refer to the Yeti who is renowned for being um, possibly one of the laziest people to have ever drawn oxygen on this planet. I digress briefly. The man's never worked a day in his life. A millionaire by the age of eight, and then he just spent money. That's all he's ever done since, spend money. He doesn't make money, he spends money. And then gets himself into deep international waters trying to pay it back. But he doesn't work. He doesn't work. Oh, 
Anyway, so back to Twitter and Trump. This is a crucible issue. This is absolutely major. It's central. All the swords are pointing in. Could be T for Twitter or T for Trump. Ha! Huh. So this isn't going to go away as an issue. But the, the outcome, and this is a mini outcome because it's a fairly new issue, is the world and the universe. I like the Toth deck from the point of view they've shifted from the idea of the world to the idea of the universe. And so it's an even bigger picture again. This is something that actually needs to concern all of us. So things are being taken to their most extreme by the universe to force us to focus. The American people have been watching the dismantling of the fundamentals of their civic order and it's, you think he can't do any more, but here you go, he's going for the First Amendment. The only good news in all this, not the only good news, but particularly good news, I think from here on in, as he starts racking up more court cases, because that's what he does, that's his modus operandi, just keep people going to court, it's going to suddenly again reach critical mass where he's the one going to court for everything. But what I was setting out to say was there's almost not enough time in legal terms from now till the end of the year for any more new court cases. So even if he does his worst, and he will, Expect him to do vile and illegal things. Expect that. Expect him to be outrageous. He will be. But from now on, the court cases, there isn't time to set them up to get them going. You know, that's why we're still here waiting years ago for things that happened in 2017. We're waiting for things on Flynn that happened, then, you know, and all of that. So that's the good news. There isn't time for any more court cases. He'll launch them, but it'll be a new world, literally, by then, and hopefully a new universe. So the other person, um, why I got the Toth cards out too, was having to have another look at Pompeo. I'm sure other readers find this. On the one hand, you get really sick of reading the same people over and over, but this is such a volatile and important time and things keep shifting. And Pompeo has been caught um, basically doing an arms deal with Saudi Arabia that has not gone through Congress. In other words, an illegal arms deal. On top of everything else, I mean, Words fail me. They fail me. I think myself, Barr and Pompeo, they're two hugely destructive men. Remember, the Yeti's only a wannabe dictator. He's actually grossly inefficient and stupid and contradictory. He's not even a good puppet. I mean, if he was a horse, you'd shoot him. I mean, really, he couldn't run a bath, let alone a country. It's these men who are the truly powerful, destructive men. And who are they really serving? So just to recap, while I'm psyching into Pompeo, if there's new viewers out there, I've been saying now for quite a while that I think Boris Johnson isn't going to be there long. For those of you who haven't followed the UK, his right-hand man, and in fact, the person who pulls his strings, Dominic Cummings, and he's a particularly venomous cross between Steve Bannon and Stephen Miller. If you can imagine both of them in one person, you'd be getting lukewarm. That's how bad Dominic Cummings is. He's the one who pushed Brexit. And remember, viewers, back two years ago, I was saying I couldn't see Brexit actually happening. And so even though they sign pieces of paper and things, I don't think it's going to go ahead. But Boris isn't going to last long because he's totally invested with Dominic Cummings. 
This comes back to Cambridge Analytica, who hacked the American elections with all the Russian stuff and the um, allegedly, allegedly, I stress, allegedly. Um, they were the ones who fed Brad Pascal the misinformation to put out there, the micro-targeting of, of voters. Cambridge Analytica, Rebecca Mercer, all of those, same mob, the same people, Dominic Cummings, Nigel Farage and Cambridge Analytica did Brexit. So for Americans watching, you should be looking at the UK very closely. Okay, because all the same interference was done. Now, Pompeo and this arms deal. Is he going to be found out? Is he in trouble over it? Or is he going to swan off? Ah, oh, so hard to watch this. Pompeo. Pompeo and the Saudi deal. I want to know what went on with that. What's Pompeo and the Saudi deal? Arafant. Hmm. All right. Sorry about this camera and its limitations. I'll hold the cards up. So in the center, The Hierophant, this is government, law and order, organised religion, how things are done and so forth. In this case, I think this is representing the government of Saudi Arabia with this Pompeo read. Past actions and past thinking, these are the good things. Look at this. You have the star and the sun. There they are, fabulous cards in relation to Saudi Arabia. I have to jump in here, viewers. I digress. Now, back after 9-11, when it was found that 15 of the 19 hijackers were Saudis, Bush and the others decided the obvious reaction to that was to be really nice to Saudi Arabia and to go and bomb Iraq. Now, Australia said, yes, we'll go with you, the coalition of the willing, our conservative government at the time. Crazy. The UK under Tony Blair, who's the equivalent of a Democrat, but was really so middle of the road, he was conservative, said, we'll go into coalition of the willing. Now, everyone on the left in Australia, the UK and everywhere said, are you mad? This is an unwinnable war. It's going to cost a fortune. It's going to destabilise the Middle East because you're not going to win this war. It's madness, don't do it. So what happens? No, we went in with you and what? happened. Well, it cost a fortune. Where did that money go? It went to people like Dick Cheney and Halliburton and Eric Prince. So individuals got wealthy while all us as countries spent fortunes in a pointless war that just really reinvigorated the Taliban, gave birth to ISIS, created 4 million refugees just in Iraq out of 8 million people, 4 million were displaced. If the dominoes right to Syria today, another 5 million displaced. Direct result of a really bad call. And I can't even blame George Bush because he was a puppet. So for those right wing neocon hawks, in America, who also had their friends and allies in Australia and the UK, we are all collectively wearing the aftermath of that really stupid decision. So, end of digression. Reminding you where we're at. This is the very strict sort of um, take on the Saudi Arabian government, because as we know, it's totally oil dependent and it's at the mercy now of its new young MBS who's a playmate with what's his face? 
Krishna. Okay. On top of that, the emperor. Now, is this MBS? Is this Pompeo? Or is this the Yeti? Normally, I would jump to this being the Yeti as the emperor, but he doesn't understand foreign relations. He's flat out making his way around Queens. It was a big step to go to Manhattan and with the help of a driver and a GPS, he can get around Manhattan. That's about it. I think this is Pompeo as an emperor and he's playing a very dangerous game. He's engaged here. There's a message coming for Pompeo. And the message is from the Prince of Discs, which is Pentacles. It's about money. It's about the dirty money. I want to clarify on this and the outcome, because the outcome card is the universe again. This is a big issue, a huge issue. If you think of this back as the regular world card, this affects the whole world. And because we're in this particular time frame at the moment where we're transitioning worlds, we're literally shifting how we're doing everything in society. It is the universe. That's their outcome. So back to Pompeo, I want a clarifier on the Prince of Discs. Oh, he's lucky, but he has an enemy. Okay, lucky for now. In other words, there's so much going on between now and the election. I think he'll keep going for now and think he'll be all right. This is a lucky card, but here's his enemy. And his enemy is going to come down on him like a ton of bricks. So short term, I'm going to say, I think Pompeo will bluff his way out of this, but eventually he'll be hauled up for it. Is he going to go to jail? I don't know. I mean, you know what it's like, intrepid viewers with people. I mean, I try and be a higher person. I don't want to wish illness and death on anyone. Normally, I wouldn't wish jail on people. But for the people we're dealing with now, who are so flagrantly horrendous, I mean, let me share, intrepid viewers, let me share my favourite fantasy. Should Donald Trump not go to jail? if he doesn't end up in a padded facility, if none of those things happen to him, I wish him all the best if he has to leave the country to avoid all these court cases, that he ends up bussing tables in El Salvador, being cast out for speaking bad Spanish or not speaking Spanish. Wouldn't that be idyllic? You know, so there we are. So now we're going to move on. People have been asking me, because I've been talking about this new person who I think we haven't met yet, or at least not met in the sense of recognising the role that this person can play. I'm seeing him as younger, but at the moment under 70 is younger. So he could be 45 or 56, but he's younger than this current crop. Okay, um, I think he has dark hair. He is a very gifted speaker and he's great at pulling people together. And I don't see him as a contender in this round. He might not even actually be in politics. He might be in some other area. So he's turned up, he's been turning up for two years. And people have said to me, is it young Joe Kennedy? Well, I'll have a look. I've moved to the normal cards for this because he doesn't deserve, you know, the hardcore cards. So I'm using the right away. I hope it's not Joe Kennedy. You know why, viewers? Might be my Irish background, might be my Australian sort of way of thinking. I don't like dynasties or dynasties, as you guys call them, even when they're good ones. I don't like, people should not be born to rule. I'm sorry, it should be a merit system. You should get there on merit. And it doesn't matter if you come from the back blocks of Arkansas or downtown Manhattan, you should get there on merit. Not just wave through to these huge jobs. 
Oh, that's another thing um, I was reading this morning. Because the Trump campaign is going to keep going for Biden and Hunter Biden. Um, and I saw something. It was another reader. And I thought, oh, I hope that's right. Who was it? Might have been Cash Peters. So I said, Biden's going to just not go there on the Trump criminal offspring. Um, going to hold off, hold off, hold off. And then late in the piece, near to the elections, go for it. Wouldn't that be fabulous? So whoever said that, I really hope you're on the money. In the meantime, whoops, bad shuffle. Not a cosmic moment. Joe Kennedy is the young Joe Kennedy. His name is Joe, isn't it? Like the hideous grandfather, wasn't he a bullying, alcoholic, bit of a nightmare? That Joe Kennedy? I don't know. Okay, but I think we know who we mean. The young one, I think he's sort of involved in politics. Has he got a role? Is he a baby lawn maker somewhere? What does he do? See, people, this is the other thing, another digression for yours. People used to have jobs and careers and then go into politics as a doctor or a dentist or a vet or as an ex-military or something. Now they decide at birth they're going to go into politics. So they've got no idea what public service is. They've got no idea what the job entails. They've got no idea what the real world looks like. And so we're all everywhere going, why are our politicians so useless? Do I have to tell them everything? Really? Okay, Joe Kennedy. What's going to happen for him? Let's say next five years or next four years. Let's see if it make a difference between now and the next election because everything's going to change by 2024. Okay. Okay. Let's see what the cards have to say about him. Oh, my upside down cards. Oh, he's a little bit disappointed to start with. Never mind, love. Then there's a celebration. Ooh. Hmm. Maybe, maybe. They're powerful cards, but not awe-inspiring. Is he a bit disappointed he hasn't been a player in this round? Or are people disappointed he hasn't thrown his hat into the ring because everyone loves a Kennedy? Hmm. I think it might be the second one. People are a bit disappointed we haven't heard more from him. It's too late now. Don't forget this, viewers. It's too late for lots of things, and that can be good news. Okay, but going forward, I've asked for the next four years. I think he's going to announce he's going to run for the next election or announce that he's running for Senate or announce something that's meaningful. But bearing in mind, not everyone's on board. The people behind these figures aren't looking. There'll be an announcement, but that's not going to rock the world. Then he gets two heavy cards of the old school patriarchy. One is the Hierophant, which we just got. Law and order, government, social conventions. Let narrowness. Now, are the Kennedys still Catholic? This is the most Catholic card in the right of weight. This is the papal blessing, um, the secret keys on the box with the bones of the saint, the pillars of wisdom. I think this could be bringing all his history and the weight of the name to the table, right? Now, again, the emperor turns up. He's too young, even in four years, to be the emperor. Who was his father? Is he Bobby Kennedy's son? I can never keep the Kennedys straight. If some other emperor figure, it could be the legacy from Joe who I was talking about while I was shuffling. It could be the great legacy, but it, it's an older man who's a quite a repressive 
difficult figure in civilian robes, but also the armour underneath. My vibe isn't this isn't Joe Kennedy himself. He's stuck with this. This is his blessing and his curse. His blessing and his curse. Aha, now it makes sense. Oh, he has to juggle and make up his mind. Is it worth the dance? He's not that keen, I think, to enter into the power game um, that is to be a Kennedy in a front row seat in modern America. I don't think he's going, woo, you know, I'm your guy. I think he'll have to be talked into it. And it's not an obvious thing for him to do at all. It's juggle, juggle, juggle. That's why I think when he does make an announcement fairly early on, this is early on in the four years, he's going to announce he's going to do something. That's why it's a bit little. <laughs> Queen of Wands, his wife, his mother. You can tell me, viewers, who's the biggest influence on his life? Is he married with a tribe of kids? I've got no idea. But a very strong woman in his life, and it could well be his mother. Um, I have no idea which of those two. So let's see if we can get a clarify on why the mother's so important. I think if nothing else, men who have good mothers um, tend to end up not being afraid of strong women and therefore they can function as whole human beings in relationships and actually make a difference. So decent men emerge from strong women. That's another thing. Um, I think it was an article in the Atlantic or something. Why Trump supporters, mainly working class men, why do they love Trump? He normally represents everything they don't like. This is a guy who never leaves the house unless he's in a suit. He's never got his hands dirty. He doesn't pay his contractors. He's a smart ass and a blowhard. Why? And it has to be, to answer my own question, it has to be he clever, well, Brad Pascal cleverly identified, say, tell them they're the forgotten people and tell them you'll build a wall. Um, and it's like he said he was taking on their traditional enemies the elite and something. They believe this guy who arrives in a plane and stays for an hour and a half isn't the elite. Well, he's never done a thing. Why doesn't that work? I don't understand. Okay, finishing off Joe Kennedy for today. More on Joe, please. Very strong woman in his life. The Grand Signore is going over the Emperor. That is is it his grandfather or his great-grandfather is hanging over? Oh, there's a jealousy there. I think that's jealousy within the family. He has to think about it. Oh, okay. All right, what I think has happened is at the end of the day, the Kennedys are still a clan, right? And I think the clan has got together and said, Joe's our next bet, you know. Joe, Joe, Joe. Remember old Joe, here's our young Joe, here's our one that's going to be great. And I think it's given all his cousins the earths. And I think there's jealousy. There's jealousy there. I think this older mature woman is probably his mum and she's talking him through these dynamics with the family. And by the family, I don't just mean the nuclear family, wife and kiddies. I think there's a big mob of them. You don't get a huge Irish Catholic family like that that doesn't have chaos and drama and issues. And also generosity and a great egalitarian streak and everything else, but it's a very mixed bag. I think she's helping him negotiate, saying, you don't have to do it like him. You don't have to be him. It's a different time. Don't listen to your cousins. They're just jealous. You can do this. And if you do it, do it for the country. I think that's her message. So he's thinking as we 
sit here and he's thinking about it. Well, that's fair enough. I think I like him a little bit more now. Now I know he's not just hungry for it. It's sort of different. He could use that position for the greater good. That's kind of cute. Okay then everyone. Well, I'm sure by the time I load this, there'll be another crop of court cases, news flashes, and other dramas. But I'll see you on the other side, and I love you so much. Bye for now. Ciao.